I'm Stephen Bendenoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. From the former Soviet Union and the reemergence of such a country and the threat thereof to Israel's politics possibly being tampered with. The world is certainly in a turmoil everywhere we look. Shalom, an interesting way that the new year, the Gregorian New Year, is starting off already. Uh, on Slovakian television, Channel 3, uh, it probably is actually reporting that, that uh, Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, has been talking about bringing back in some of the former Soviet states and re-establishing uh, the Soviet Union once again. There has been talk on news <clears throat> throughout the eastern uh, countries in Europe uh, as, uh, of this very much possibility. And no wonder why there may be talk such as this, because the United States through its own diplomatic channels and its own failing economy has put so much pressure and sanctions against Russia that it's able to cripple Russia's economy as a result. Therefore, President Putin is being forced in his own hand on how to react. <laughs> how to react, I guess, just slight of actually causing a war in, in response to. So therefore, there has been uh, talks uh, today on Slo Slovakian television, uh, Channel 3, that is, uh, probably is the name of that, that have actually said that there has, uh, on inside uh, reports there, that the Soviet Union, Vladimir Putin, has been threatening to take back over certain countries and reestablish the former Soviet Union. Very serious news indeed. Also in Israel, there is, all, uh, according to Israel National News, uh, Faglin, the Moshe Faglin, who is actually was running against Netanyahu in the uh, in the Likud party election there, to who would actually represent the Likud uh, Likud party there in Israel for the uh, spring elections. <clears throat> one of his own uh, primary, uh, excuse me, one of his own aides says that the uh, the election was rigged. It, there was a block done. Uh, by the prime minister on having observers there while the votes were counted. It was something that was supposedly was done in the middle of the night. And uh, Moshe Faglin, uh, very disappointed in the results. Uh, he actually says on his Facebook page, I embrace you all. I promise you that despite the dark shadow on the proper procedure of these elections and whatever the final results, we will not stop fighting for our principles and continue our loyal service to the nation of Israel, he added. Now, <clears throat> it's kind of interesting because we see the Vatican's hand in the background on all of these things that are going on. And for those of you that may not be aware of Moshe Faglin and his political stance, he is not for a two-state solution. Uh, one of the things in, in an interview that he had not too long ago um, uh, on the Steve Malzberg show in the United States <clears throat> on, that's on Newsmax, for those of you that uh, do not follow Newsmax, is a very much strong supporter of Israel. Uh, several quotations that he made, he said, the land of Israel belongs only to Jews. And until, <clears throat> until the Arab world recognizes this, there cannot be peace achieved. He said that the monies that are being spent now as a result of the Oslo Accord for the security of the Jews in, in the different settlements should be used on helping those Arabs go to other nations to resettle. And those that, would, that are willing to fully accept Israel's sovereignty and right to the land of Israel that God has given them, they could actually become full members with human rights protections in Israel as citizens there. Uh, he also challenged on Steve Malzberg's show there uh, that <clears throat> the Palestinian, so-called Palestinian state <clears throat> never existed. He said, show me a coin, show me a poet from the 1800s where there was a Palestinian state. He said Israel has fought the Egyptians, they fought other nations, but there was never a Palestinian state, which is very much true. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, in other news, let's continue on. Once again, uh, orders were suspended for the demolition of the shooter of Rabbi uh, Yehuda Glick. Uh, that's been happening here lately. Normally when Israel has a terrorist attacker it, that, that either takes life or nearly takes the life of another Israeli, they demolish the home of that person that actually is the perpetrator of this. But in the last few attacks, they have not done this. Another 
interesting development there. And as I pointed out earlier there, the there must be some kind of consensus that has been reached with the Vatican in the background because the United States and Australia uh, 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 vetoed the vote for the United, at the United Nations for a Palestinian state where uh, Mahmoud Abbas was making that bid. Kind of lets uh, Mahmoud Abbas know that he is not in control. Uh, however, the European Union states were all abstaining in this particular election. So very interesting to see who really controls uh, the events that are taking place in the Middle East. Another very <clears throat> sad news that is coming out as well in Israel, on Israel National News there, is that... Uh, um, the uh, Gantz did not know, he says, that, the, that they were going to pull out the IDF patrols from around, in and around Gaza there. It states on here on Thursday, sources said that the decision was taken not uh, under the advisement of Gantz, but the IDF personnel in Gaza border area. The decision was made, according to the sources, by Colonel uh, Italia Gev commander of the Gaza Brigade, along with his staff. An announcement the decision Tuesday, the Army said it had been made after evaluating the security situation with the understanding that the IDF provides optimal security to the communities in the Gaza Belt in co coordination with the heads of the communities, uh, the statement said. The IDF forces are deployed in the area and are prepared for any scenario, stressed the IDF spokesman's uh, unit there. Um, just, it's very interesting to see the different pullbacks, and, and you cannot help but wonder who's pulling the political strings that is forcing the hands of the, of the military in Israel and the police as well. We see the police standing down in Jerusalem, uh, not even fighting back with deadly force when they are being attacked with deadly force by Arab terrorists. Uh, it's, it's just really a mess in Israel, and only, only... Uh, will God himself be able to turn the tide? I'm Stephen Bindenen with Israeli News Live. Shalom.